السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. His household, his companions. May Allah bless them, bless every one of us, grant goodness to the entire ummah. May Allah make us resolve our matters, our disputes. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bring the ummah together and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant us that to. togetherness in the most unique way and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse our hearts for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who make an effort to clean our hearts and may he favor us in this beautiful season. My brothers, my sisters, the supplications we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dua that we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must be serious about the dua. There is no point in calling out to Allah to give you something and you're not making an effort. You need to make an effort as well to try and achieve what you're asking for. So when you ask for goodness, you try and do goodness. When you ask for protection from evil, you try your best to abstain from evil. You don't just walk towards sin and say, oh Allah, protect me from sin, but you're walking towards it. So we were continuing Continuing from the previous episode, we mentioned the hadith of Anas bin Malik radiallahu an. I did not yet complete that hadith, but I'm quickly recapping it. He says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasali wal jubni wal harami wa a'udhu bika min a'thab al-qabri wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat. Oh Allah. I seek your protection from inability or disability. I seek your protection from laziness. I seek your protection from cowardice. I seek your protection from uh, old age. I seek your protection from the punishment of the grave. And I seek your protection, O oh Allah, from the trials and tribulations of life and death. And the hadith ends there. It is muttafaqun alayh. Hadith of Anas bin Malik. Who was this Anas bin Malik? Radiallahu anh. He was a khadim. He was a servant of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And he served the Prophet for 10 whole years. And the point that comes to my mind when I think of this beautiful individual, as he was a young boy, he grew up, he was one of the last to die or to pass away from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And he lived for a long, long time, mashallah. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anh, he says, I served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 whole years. Not once did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say a bad word to me. Not once did he say oof to me. Not once did he say, why did you do this? Not once. I served him for 10 years and he actually spoke to me with utmost respect. He helped me do what was my task, what I was tasked to do. He helped me do it. He did not get angry with me. He did not get upset. I remember telling some brothers and even some sisters, my brothers, my sisters, how many of us with those who work for us with the helping hands at home and anywhere else, we get upset and angry every day. We swear and shout. We treat them in such a belittling fashion that it is embarrassing to call ourselves followers of this great example who the servant himself is saying never did he did do that never did he say a bad word he always helped me he respected me he was smiling he didn't even say oof to me and i served him for 10 whole years with us Every 10 minutes, there's a bad word that comes out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We still call ourselves followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Isn't that embarrassing? So my brothers and sisters, Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to respect me big time. Subhanallah. May Allah make us from among, from among those who are inspired to respect those whom we work with, who work with us, for us, and subhanallah, all those whom we work for as well. That having been said, these young people told me, well, that was uh, the prophet, peace be upon him. I'm not a prophet. Astaghfirullah. Come on. That's a very bad way of looking at things. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
was sent to us in order for us to try and follow his example. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We have never sent a messenger except that he should be followed, except in order that he should be followed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So follow that example. And then they say, well, the people working for us were not Anas bin Malik. I know maybe if Anas bin Malik was working for us, radiallahu anhu, then maybe we would have been the same. He must have been such a good worker. Those are cheap excuses. Don't say that. We are not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people working with us, for us, whatever, they are not Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, but the example fits. We need to be more careful about how we speak. You want the mercy of Allah, have mercy on others. If you want your answer, the answer of your dua and your supplication, have mercy on people. But imagine you are calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've just harmed all those around you. What do you expect to come in your direction? Nothing besides harm. So the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he is seeking the protection of Allah from helplessness, from laziness, from being a coward, astaghfirullah, which he wouldn't ever have been, from old age, and he is seeking protection from the punishment of the grave, the punishment of the grave, may Allah protect us. And he is seeking protection from the trials and tribulations of life and death. This means in life we will all have trials, tribulations. We seek Allah's protection from the trials and tribulations that would drown us, that which we would not be able to uh, go through. In one of the episodes, I remember reading the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah near the end, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us uh, about the dua, Rabbana wala tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bihi. Oh Allah, do not burden upon us that which we won't be able to shoulder. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us. Uh, again, this is a beautiful, powerful narration of the Prophet sallallahu It's important that we learn it, we put it into practice, we repeat it, we say it. And like I've said before, if you don't know the Arabic, at least say it in any other language while you are busy learning the Arabic. The Arabic is powerful. It's the exact wording of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It would be an honor to say the same words and it is definitely more virtuous. But if you don't know the same words, then at least start saying it in any language that you know, Oh Allah, protect me from uh, laziness, protect me from whatever else, miserliness and so on. Then there is another hadith of a totally different Sahabi. Look at how many Sahaba have narrated these ahadith. I made mention of Abu Huraira radiallahu anha, Aisha radiallahu anha, Anas bin Malik radiallahu an, uh, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. Uh, so many of these narrations. Uh, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. Yes, here Zayd ibn Arqam. Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu an. He says, That the Prophet sallallahu in fact he says, لا أقول لكم إلا كما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول. Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu anhu is saying, I am not going to tell you except that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to say. What did he used to say? He used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajz wal-kasal. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from helplessness and laziness. We called it inability, disability. We can also call it helplessness. It's the same thing, it's ajz, when you're helpless. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from helplessness and laziness. Wal-jubni wal-bukhl. And from cowardice and from miserliness. Wal harami and from old age. So all of these are already mentioned in the previous hadith. Wa adabil qabri and from the punishment of the grave. Now there is an addition that is not in the previous narration. What is it? Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. O Allah, grant my soul its piety. Subhanallah. O oh Allah, grant my soul the piety. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. O oh Allah, give my soul the piety, the taqwa, the God consciousness, the consciousness of you, O oh Allah. You know, we learn from the Quran that Allah is the controller of uh, the nafs and Allah is the controller of the taqwa as well. Allah is the giver of the taqwa. So we're asking Allah, who's the owner of the nafs, to actually give it the taqwa. So, O oh Allah, 
آتی نفسی تقواها و زکیها انت خیر من زکاها انت ولیوها و مولاها او اللہ grant my nafs its piety grant my soul its piety and cleanse it for indeed you are the best of those who cleanse cleanse it purify it purify my soul for you are indeed the best of those who purify anta waliyuha wa maulaha you are its guardian and protector you are the protector of my soul and you are the guardian of my soul subhanallah subhanallah i want to repeat that allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha Amazing dua. We need to memorize it and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our soul, to grant us the piety deep within our souls and hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And he continues, Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu an continues, Allahumma, he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmi la yanfa. Now, we spoke about knowledge. Here, the Prophet is saying, O oh Allah, I seek your protection from knowledge. That is a waste of time. That is not beneficial at all. You know, people sometimes know so many things, but it's irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's not going to help you at all. You know the fine details of so much. You'd rather have used that capacity to memorize something or to learn something that was absolutely beneficial. You know, I've sat with some young people as they grow up, they know the finer details of every single thing. Sometimes that is not beneficial. And when you ask them about real life matters, the akhirah, the dunya, Allah, the Rasul, وسلم, as well as the Sahaba, عنهم, they don't even know. They don't even have a clue. And they're not even interested sometimes. May Allah create that interest for us in our hearts. May Allah make us from those who look forward to the opportunity to increase our knowledge good knowledge, that which will benefit us. Amen. So this is a dua, seeking protection from knowledge that is not beneficial. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from knowledge that is not beneficial. Wa min qalbin la yakhsha. Powerful, powerful. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from a heart that does not fear you. A heart that is not content, subhanallah. A heart that does not fear you. A heart that is not conscious of you. A heart that is not filled with humility. There goes. A'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha. I seek your protection from having a heart that is not filled with humility. I want to be humble. My heart needs to be content. It needs to be protected. It needs to be filled with khushu'a. You know, this humbleness, this calmness, this beauty. When I worship you, I, I, I love it. You know, when we say Allahu Akbar and we start salah, sometimes the heart is not even there. Sometimes the heart is not even there. So we're saying, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha. Wa min nafsin la tashba. And I seek protection from a nafs from a soul or a self, from being someone who's never filled, never quenched. Never quenched. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min nafsin la tashba. I seek protection, O oh Allah, in you from having a soul that is never filled or content. Subhanallah. Look at these duas. It, it actually is amazing that the Prophet, peace be upon him, who already was the best, he had a heart that was the best, he had khushu'a, he, he, he was always content, he was the greatest and so on. He's making this dua. And Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu anhu is telling us, I'm going to tell you what I heard the Prophet say. He, I heard him say this. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So then the last part of the dua, وَمِن دَعْوَةٍ لَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهَا Oh Allah, I seek your protection from making a prayer to you, that's not going to be answered. I seek protection in you from making a prayer to you that's not going to be answered. Subhanallah. Amazing dua. This hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim. If we go through the, this hadith, and I'd like to just read it again for the benefit of every one of us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal wal-jubni wal-bukhl wal-haram 
وعذاب القبر اللهم آت نفسي تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها O oh Allah I seek your protection from helplessness and laziness I seek your protection from cowardice and from miserliness from old age with helplessness and I seek your protection from the punishment of the grave O oh Allah grant my soul its piety and god consciousness and purify it cleanse it for indeed you are the best of those who cleanse O oh Allah you are the its protector you are its guardian O oh Allah I seek your protection from knowledge that will that is not beneficial from a heart that has no khushu' in it a heart that is not humble or filled with humility from a soul that is never full or content and from a prayer or supplication made to you that is not responded to amazing these are the blessed words of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they teach us a lot they teach us that there are people who are never happy there are people whose hearts are not good there are people who have knowledge that is not beneficial there are people who call out to allah without or who call out perhaps even deities besides allah Obviously, they're not going to get responded to, but those who call out to Allah with wrong intention or without that humility, without fulfilling the conditions of calling out to Allah, uh, what do they expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So uh, these are some blessed words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another hadith of Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu that is made mention of that is also similar but slight difference and I'm going to mention it because of the difference. عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه narrates he says the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن wow oh Allah oh Allah he used to say oh Allah I seek your protection from worry and sadness brothers and sisters this is powerful what worry did the Prophet ﷺ have or sadness? Subhanallah, he was, the, he was the best of creation. We need this dua more than anyone else. Many of us complaining of worry, anxiety. Al-Ham also refers to anxiety. And Al-Hazan or Al-Huzn refers to sadness. People are sad today, very sad. For what? Over something minor sometimes. And people are suffering with anxiety to the degree that they don't even know what to do. They are worried about the future. They are worried about what's going to happen. So much of anxiety, so much of worry in the mind, in the heart. And it affects the health. It affects everything. It affects those around you. So this dua is very, very powerful. Oh Allah, protect me from anxiety and from sadness. My brothers, my sisters, don't we desperately need this dua? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from anxiety, I seek your protection from worry and from sadness. And hazan could also mean difficulty. It could also translate as difficulty. Alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba anna al hazan. You know, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has deflected from us or who has saved us from uh, hazan. Hazan meaning sadness as well as difficulty and hardship. <clears throat> the next part of this dua, والعجز والكسل O oh Allah, I seek your protection from inability and I seek your protection from uh, kasal. Kasal here refers to laziness. So these two were mentioned in a previous dua, but the first two were not mentioned. So that's why I've repeated this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan wal wal kasal. Inability, helplessness. al also refers to helplessness. I seek your protection from helplessness and from laziness. Subhanallah. Wal jubni wal bukhl. Here come those two uh, characteristics again that the Prophet ﷺ kept on seeking protection uh, in Allah from. What are they? Al jubn, 
cowardice, the opposite of bravery. You know, someone is brave. We're asking Allah to be brave. And al-bukhl means miserliness, stingy. <laughs> Subhanallah, a person who doesn't want to spend. Sometimes we have millions. We don't even spend on our own families. And sometimes, you know, it's strange how some people have very little, but they spend. Amazing. We think that this person is wealthy and they're not really wealthy. They're not really wealthy. They're just spending. They are the ones who are known as the wealthy because Allah's blessed them with the ability to give. And then you have others who really have the millions and the billions. They don't give. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be able to give and to be able to, you know, uh, be generous uh, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there are two more things in this dua that are so powerful, so powerful that we all definitely do need to keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from. So he says, Oh Allah, protect us from being overcome by debt. You know, debt when we can't pay back. We took a loan, we, are, we cannot pay back. Oh Allah, protect us from that condition where we cannot pay back our debts. Oh Allah, protect us from the condition where we cannot pay back our debts, the overburdening through debt, where the debt has overtaken us. And غَلَبَتِ rijal means uh, the defeat at the hands of the men, the enemy. So Oh Allah, do not allow us to be defeated by the enemy. Amazing. Let's look at the entire hadith because it's extremely beautiful. And an Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu qala kana an nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamm wal-hazan wal-ajz wal-kasal wal-jubn wal-bukhl wa dala' ad-dayn wa ghalabat ar-rijal Oh Allah, I seek your protection from anxiety, worry and sadness from inability, helplessness, and laziness, from being a coward, and from being miserly, and from being overtaken by debt, the inability to pay the debt or the loan, and from being defeated by men. Amazing hadith, amazing dua, my beloved brothers and sisters. It's about time we called out to Allah every day with these type of supplications. These type of supplications, you actually get them in a little booklet and you can read them. If you don't know how to read the Arabic language, like I said, say them in English or start learning a little bit. They will help you. Many of the people complain about all of these things and we don't know they are in the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him. These are his words. He said them. He called out to Allah using these words. He didn't need it. We need it desperately. We don't even know that these ahadith exist sometimes. We don't even know that these narrations actually exist. So it's important for us to be able to uh, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using these beautiful words. And this is why my brothers and sisters, all these characteristics that are made mention of are being made mention of for you and I, nobody else. It's you who is going to benefit from these du'as. It's myself who is going to be benefiting from these du'as. It's no one else. So if you're not going to take pride in these words and call out to Allah using these words, then it's wasted knowledge. We've learned something, we've learned something serious, we've learned the words of revelation, these supplications that have come to us via revelation, either in the Quran or in the words of the Prophet wasallam, and we're doing nothing about it. No, at least repeat them after me, or at least say them, at least learn them, jot them down, try and call out to Allah. I'm sure every one of us can relate to a lot of what the Prophet ﷺ was saying in terms of dua. In our own lives, we are going through these things. We, you can say, right, this point here is mine. This point here, perhaps, uh, you know, is something that I can take and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we took these things seriously. And it's about time we cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah grant us all ease until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.